Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this detailed evening update on recently formed Tropical Storm Brett, which is expected to become a hurricane and make its way into the Caribbean. And so uh, I'm going to be delving into all that is expected of the cyclone as well as uh, Invest 93L, which is a tropical wave behind it being monitored for development. And it seems as though that one is going to be our next named storm. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update okay guys and so first things first though i want to introduce you to my new channel which is weather extras now it was originally the nature but i changed it to be sort of an extension for weather girl danny because i want to upload here on this channel twice a day so with any major update that comes between that time frame between the morning and the evening hours i would post to weather extras so go ahead and subscribe to that channel as well so that you always stay updated i'm going to try to produce timely updates as best as I can. So now let's go ahead and get into what is happening. Firstly, we're looking at the uh, what is happening right now across the Caribbean. Not going to be spending much time on this, but we see some thunderstorm activity across parts of the northern Bahamas going to South Florida, and we also see the development of some afternoon showers and thunderstorms along sections of eastern uh, Honduras going to Nicaragua, sections of Costa Rica and Panama as well. Not seeing as much convective activity compared to yesterday with that big blob in the area, and some of that activity Activity is extended into parts of Jamaica, uh, inducing mostly cloudy skies, uh, possibly a bit of rainfall in some areas, but there isn't too much happening. Across sections of Cuba, particularly the easternmost and westernmost parts of the country, there is some thunderstorm activity developing this evening. Things looking to be pretty sunny for most of Central America, the Cayman Islands, other parts of Hu uh, Cuba. And then heading over into Hispaniola, we've got some uh, afternoon showers developing uh, over the area as well, and also for parts of western Puerto Rico. But going to the Virgin Islands and most of the uh, Lesser Antilles down to St. Vincent, we see that there isn't much happening, also inclusive of Barbados. And a similar story for parts of Trinidad as well as uh, the ABC Islands. But looking just into the vicinity of Grenada, the Grenadines, uh, and even Tobago, we see that there is some activity there. Likely some uh, overcast skies with a brief shower or so, but there isn't anything too major. Going down into northern South America, spots of showers and thunderstorms developing this afternoon, nothing too intense going on there but i want to bring you guys out further east here we have our two systems tropical storm breath which is churning beautifully right now across the tropical atlantic as well as that disturbance behind it invest 93l so let's talk about 93l not going to be spending much time on it either but just to bring you guys up to date with what is expected so uh as of the latest uh this afternoon we can see that the formation chance is now at 50 percent, so it continues to increase and it is likely that this will be a next tropical cyclone by the next couple of days uh and the next name to be used is cindy so could this be cindy in the making very well so and uh looking back at it on satellite we can see here that it is producing lots of activity it has maintained uh quite a bit of that shower and thunderstorm activity so if it continues to develop all of this and eventually gets that uh, low level center of circulation then we could very well have a tropical cyclone coming from this but going back to brett so as i said earlier it is true in beautifully and we can also notice that counterclockwise spin with the cyclone so it is intensifying and it will continue to do so over the next several days now it is going to be moving into the caribbean it is highly likely that the islands will be impacted but which islands let's go on to the cone forecast and here we have it as of 5 p.m tropical storm bread has sustained winds of around 40 miles per hour and it is it isn't a slow moving cyclone it is accelerating westward at 21 miles per hour so it's not moving by very slowly and as it approaches the caribbean it is expected to pick up in its acceleration also move a bit more to the west northwest so it is expected to intensify into a hurricane uh, as we head into wednesday a category one but uh as it is going to be entering the caribbean it will be encountering some unfavorable conditions and i will go into details with the conditions and the model runs later down in this video as you can see it's a bit lengthy here but i want to give you guys all the details about what to expect so we see that it is likely to approach the lesser antilles head into thursday and by the way this is called the cone of uncertainty because the center can go anywhere within the shaded region and notice how it widens uh, as we head further out in time and that is because there is more uncertainty as we head 
uh, further into the future, into what could possibly happen. And so that is why we see that widening out so the cone can shift a bit more to the north or a bit more to the south. I know uh, my fellow Jamaicans have been asking questions in the comments. Will this affect Jamaica? It could. As I said, the track can shift a bit more to the north or to the south. And so uh, I would say for my fellow Jamaicans, as we're going to be heading into next week, please be on watch. Of course, I'll keep you guys posted. And so uh, in terms of areas to be impacted by this, so uh, most of the Leeward Islands are likely going to be feeling impacts. Puerto Rico, Hispaniola should also be on watch for this. But in terms of potential landfall, I would say anywhere from Guadeloupe going down to uh, Dominica, Martinique, and even St. Lucia, any of those islands could experience landfall. But again, the line that we're seeing, this black line is for the center of the system. It doesn't show the size. And so uh, this could be very extensive and impacts can be felt even as far south as uh, even going to Trinidad and Tobago. Some of those other bands could induce some activity there. But of course, most of that, uh, the strongest of it will be around the center. All right. And so now we're moving on to what is expected in terms of the models as well as the conditions ahead of Brett. So let's go ahead and get straight on with it. Now we're going to be starting out with the GFS model. And so uh, if you're not too familiar with this, we're looking for those circular black lines. They're called isobars and they join areas of equal pressure. And so when we see them being very compact, a lot of them in a tight space with that number that you see being lower and lower, that is indicating intensification. But the wider they are uh, with those low pressure systems, the weaker the system is. So uh, let's go ahead and see what GFS has to show for the, for the next couple of days. And there we have the time. So as we're going to be heading into uh, the middle of this week, GFS forecasting some intensification here, but eventually uh, showing that this is going to be making its way into the northeastern Caribbean, affecting parts of the Lesser Antilles, also uh, the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. So GFS is finally in agreement with what the other models were expecting because it was uh, showing some major intensification and showing the system remaining outside the Caribbean. But now we're seeing that there's a very low chance of that actually happening. And it is more than likely that this will be moving into the Caribbean. And so uh, it is also showing development of that second wave. Now that one, uh, 93L, uh, as you would have seen earlier, it is given a medium chance to develop. And so let's go ahead and move on to the Euro model. The Euro is showing that this is going to be remaining weak and uh, eventually bread is going to be approaching the Caribbean, uh, maintaining that westward trap. But as I mentioned earlier, when, when we're not seeing a whole lot of those isobars being so compact, uh, that is simply indicating that this system is weak. And that is what we're seeing Euro expecting for bread, but showing that other uh, disturbance intensifying out there. So uh, here we have Euro in agreement with the GFS in terms of it missing the Caribbean, but intensifying. So that could very well be future Cindy we're looking at. And so let's move on to the Icon model. Now Icon is showing this remaining week. It has been consistent about what it's expecting. A weak storm making its way into the Caribbean. It is going to be encountering some unfavorable conditions and eventually that activity continues to drift to the west, possibly impacting other areas such as Hispaniola and Jamaica. That other system, 93L intensifying and another wave moving westward and getting itself together. And Icon has been pretty consistent about about uh, this and it is one of the uh, accurate models out there rivals with the GFS and the Euro and here we're seeing and expecting this train of activity moving across the tropical Atlantic and to see this in the month of June I just cannot uh, get over the fact that uh, this is what we're really seeing already and it speaks a lot as to what could happen for the rest of the season this is what we would be seeing in September and uh, to have this in June it is absolutely Absolutely crazy but nevertheless I'm here tracking all of this for you guys so uh, that is what those models are expecting and now as we look at conditions ahead of Brett what is fueling it in the first place well above average sea surface temperatures we're looking at this anomaly map here which shows how much the temperature varies from what is usual and where we see more of those shades of yellows oranges reds that is where we have gradually warmer than normal ocean temperatures out there ocean surface temperatures out there and then for uh, it is the opposite with the shades of blue cooler than normal across some areas. We're focusing on the tropical Atlantic, the main development region, which is where we see most of the activity during any hurricane season. So pretty warm out there, record warming in the month of June and uh, 
that is the primary factor fueling the activity that we are seeing. And when we look at the actual sea surface temperature map, we can see that the temperatures are conducive out there. I mean, especially as we head to that area close to the Caribbean where we have that 29 degrees Celsius isotherm, it is definitely going to be helping to fuel bread. But again, it's not the only factor that we have to consider. There are more that also play important roles in the intensification of a tropical cyclone. So ocean temperatures are not going to be a problem for this. But let's go ahead and move on to the Saharan dust map. So here we have it and where we see more of those shades of oranges and reds is what we see going to the coast of Africa and north of our uh, tropical wave and uh, bread. That is where we have a lot of dense dry air. So when that infiltrates storms, we typically see all of that convective activity, those showers and thunderstorms dissipating and uh, eventually weakening off the system on a whole, but ahead of Brett, uh, conditions are conducive enough to still allow for that strengthening. And that is why uh, it is expected to become a hurricane. So it could peak as a category one. And uh, if we should return to the cone of uncertainty, we would have seen where weakening is expected because it is going to be encountering that wind shear across the northwestern, uh, northeastern Caribbean. Sorry. So uh, that is going to be uh, inducing weakening because what happens is that those stronger upper level winds, they really have to cut off thunderstorms as they develop and prevent the system from growing and intensifying but rather inducing weakening and that is what we're expected to see as we go out in time here with the euro model uh, heading to the end of this week where we have this becoming more colorful that is where we have more of those uh those stronger upper level winds and so there we have them increasing across the northeastern caribbean to help bread uh to weaken and that is some good news because we don't want a very strong hurricane uh bringing some major impacts to these different islands and so guys that is what is anticipated and uh, this video is quite a mouthful it's been uh, pretty long and uh, I don't typically make these updates this long but I want to give you guys all of the details uh, that you should know for this and all the potential all the possibilities as well so that is pretty much it for right now again you can go over to my second channel for additional updates and I will start posting there tomorrow so that is it for now guys and if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments I'll try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And remember to always be otherwise.